Hola Geek fans, it's time for a new segment. This is Guest Geeks, and today do we have for a Guest Geek, it is Caleb Soderberg. Yes, we finally have a ginger, it's amazing. <laughs> today, Caleb is going to talk about the card game Munchkin. Caleb, tell me, what is Munchkin? Munchkin is not like a collectible card game such as Pokemon or Magic the Gathering where you actually have to build your deck and actually have like the optimum cards that you want to play with. Uh, Munchkin is, it works sort of like a board game, but with cards. It's kind of hard to explain, but instead of having, like, for example, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, you might know that it's all in the imagination and all you have is like a single piece of paper. <laughs> That's a good one, all in the imagination. <laughs> Munchkin is a lot like that, but mm. instead of actually imagining it in your mind, you have cards that will show you what something looks like. Um, so it work, works a lot like Dungeons and Dragons, but what Munchkin strives to do it's the complete parody and farce of Dungeons. <laughs> okay. Um, so explain the mechanics. Why, why did you get... No, actually, first tell me, why did you... How did you find this game? Well, um, I was roaming around in um, my local library, and I found a book that said the, uh, A Munchkin's Guide to Power Gaming. I'm like, this is... What, what is power gaming and what is a munchkin? So I read the book, and basically it was a book of how to cheese and cheat and just manipulate <laughs> games in general. doesn't matter what kind of game it is, but just to be the most, you know, proverbial, um, you know, nutcase in, like, everything that you do. So I'm like, this is interesting. And the, the person that wrote it was called uh, Steve Jackson, and I don't know if that's his real name or not, but that's just what his company's called. So I went on, to, on the website, I checked out all their other stuff, and lo and behold, there was this card game munchkin. I'm like... What better card game to pick up than something that's named Munchkin? I <laughs> cheat your way through things. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's let's check it out. So I got a set uh, with my brother, and um, we played it for the first time, and it's a complete parody. Like, it's just so funny. <laughs> like, every single card is either something, like, the, the picture is really funny, or the name's really funny, or it's a pun, or, you know, just whatever. Tell me more about the cards. Show, 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 let's show us some of these cards. We're going to put some pictures on the screen of the cards while we talk about them. So, you, so talk about some of the cards, Caleb. We'll put, we'll put them up on the screen. Just tell me what, you, t tell, tell me what, what this is about. This is, this is wild. Okay. So when you play the game, when you draw a card, it could be a monster. And with all, your, all of your bonuses, all your weapons, all that kind of stuff, you go into battle. And for example, this is a, this is one on one, like if, like yep. you and I were playing. Yep. Okay. Yep. If Shane and I were playing, I would I would draw a card, and if it was a monster, I would be fighting it. But something else comes into play. Oh. You, you, if Shane wanted to, if Shane wanted something out of this, he could say, Caleb, I want your help to defeat this monster. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you know, I will help you for um, but, but I'll help you. But what will you give me? And I'll be like, Well, I could give you one item. I'll, I could trade you something. And Shane's like, okay, well, let's do that. So Shane would help me in combat, and if we defeat the monster, then, yeah, we, um, we defeat it, and we get its treasure and levels. I'll explain that later. But um, generally, if you want to be devious about it, Shane cannot help me. And <laughs> he, he can throw in cards that will hinder me instead. He'll be like, oh, this monster is an extra plus five. Or, <laughs> guess what, I'm going to add another monster. So now, now you're fighting two monsters, Caleb. Could, you ha is this, could, this be more, could this be more than two players? Yep, it's, uh, generally you're not supposed to play with just two players. Um, three, four, or five is the ideal amount. Like, I play with my family, and uh, we all <laughs> love the game. So, like, you know, it's not very... It's not very hard to find, like, four So, so are you, like, forming alliances with people, like, they're like, oh, let's make this harder for him, and, you know, let's make this harder for him, but we're going to help each other with monsters? Yep, absolutely. Okay. But the whole point of Munchkin is that you can backstab your friends at any <laughs> Anytime. time. So even though you have the secret alliance, you can oh turn on them and, and say, oh, oh, I, I wish I could help you <laughs> defeat that monster, but, hey, I'm going to have you die instead, you know? You just be super mean and, you know, cruel about it. I'm already loving this game. Should, start, start showing me some of it. Okay, so here's one example of a monster. Should I hold up to the camera? Uh, no, don't worry about that. We're, we're going to put it on screen later. Okay, so this one is level 6, Big Fat Harry Dale. Big Fat Harry Dale, a munchkin not of your party. Slay him! Bad stuff. He takes your dice. Next time you need to roll a die, the person to your left just tells you what to roll. <laughs> what? So <laughs> he's level six. He's level six. So look how he looks. He looks so ridiculous. Look at him on the screen. He looks ridiculous. He looks like that the stereotypical gamer dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a tie dyed shirt and everything. <laughs> when, I, when I used to go to the grid in Manchester to play Magic the Gathering. This is the dude I saw, big fat heavy <laughs> dude, right here. This is the dude sitting there, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, if your if your level, if your bonuses is not higher than six, 
you have to roll to run away, and that's a whole other mechanic. But sometimes the bad stuff will happen, and in this case, you know, next time you roll a dice, the person to your left tells you what you roll. So let's say you want to get a high roll on something, like, for example, some effect happens, and you have to roll a dice, and the higher you roll, the better you do. If this bad stuff happens, the player to my left will say, oh, no, you rolled a one instead. That means, like, you'll lose something, you know. So bad stuff is always, like, it's always a negative effect. Okay. And next, um, I have a level 20 Plutonium Dragon. Ooh, a deadly Plutonium Dragon. Ooh, will not pursue anyone of level 5 or below. Bad stuff. You are roasted and eaten. You are dead. Wow, this is epic. That dragon, is that's an epic drawing. I can't, there's no way, there's no way I could draw that well. I'm astonished. So this guy is um, one of the toughest monsters in the game. and um, <laughs> I love the picture, though, which is ridiculous. Yo, I know. Don't worry. I have so many more pictures, though. Oh, I, man. I, I could show you. But, um, yeah, what, on the bottom here, it says two levels and five treasures. So this entire game is based on, uh, like, its winning mechanic is all completely based on levels. So, for example, when you kill a monster or you have a card that says something, go up a level. How do you kill a monster? So there's die, right, you say? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what's a stick? What's a standard turn play out like? Okay, standard turn. So, for the first, for when, it, when it's your turn, the first thing you'll do is just range your cards, make sure you have all your uh, weapons equipped, you have everything, you know, situated, and then you draw your first door card, which is what the the monsters and other things are. That'd be like your deck in Magic the Gathering. Yep, yep, absolutely. And uh, you would, you would draw that, and if it's like, for example. Um, a monster. You would fight the monster immediately with all your bonuses. You can ask other people for help. People can screw you over or whatever. Um, but so, you're, you're starting with, though, a core group of cards. Yep. Like, like how are those cards dealt to you? Are they at random? Well, I'm, I'm getting to that. Oh, oh. So, um, when you defeat a monster, for example, this Plutonium Dragon, you get two levels, which moves you up, you know, two spaces. Um, and then the five treasures. There's a, a separate treasure deck. Ah. Yes. So, whenever you defeat a monster, uh, you draw cards from that uh, treasure deck. For example, he gives you five, so you draw five cards. And those cards can be anything from weapons, armor, gear, um, other bonuses, other things that you can use to your advantage during the game. Um, so that's how you accrue your your gear, is by slaying monsters and other types Man, we of need to get the rest of the Geeks crew here to play this, play one of these games. That would be an amazing, that would be an amazing <laughs> show. I would definitely show up for that. <laughs> I'll have to talk to Jacob and Joey, see what's going on there. Yeah. So, for example, some other cards uh, for items, there's the Boots of Butt Kicking. <laughs> Death from Below, and it's got some spikes on it, some nasty spikes, which makes it even more hilarious, because they're Boots of Butt Kicking. Right, what's going to happen when you kick a butt? <laughs> It's ridiculous. Why is it 400 gold pieces? Okay, so the 400 gold pieces is another uh, mechanic in the game where, let's say you have a whole bunch of worthless items that you don't need or you don't want. You don't want to give them to other players because that will give the other players an right. advantage as well. If you have a thousand gold pieces worth of items, you can sell those, just basically just discard them, and you go up another level. So you're Ooh. even one step closer to victory. So it's always only a thousand gold pieces. Yep. Okay. You can do two thousand, which will put you up two levels, right. but you have to have at least a thousand. So the gold, gold otherwise is worthless unless you have a thousand. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, and then another one, because we just had a holiday recently, the Scary Helmet. Ooh! Which is just a pumpkin on someone's head, it's not right. very important. Check out our Halloween special uh, spectacular, that was episode 21. We get dressed up, it's crazy, and we have pumpkins on the set. Nice, nice, nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I do. <laughs> and next, the final... Uh, I love this card so much. The Chainsaw of Bloody Dismemberment. <laughs> oh, man! Oh, man. Two... Two hands big? What is that for? So, physically, you can you most people have two hands. Um, <laughs> most people. Most people. Octopus people don't, but that's... No, of course not. That's, that's, that's a whole different game. Right. In, in, in Munchkin, you can have two hands worth of items. You can have two one-hand weapons, or you can have one two-hand weapon. Okay. So, uh, you kind of want to weigh up, oh, do I want to use these two items, or one two-hand item? You know what I'm saying? Um, and also on the bottom of the card, it says big. You can only have one big item total. So you can't have two big items. If you do, you have to trade it or sell it or whatever. You, ha you can only have one. Because, you know, obviously, no, all of us have huge muscles. <laughs> you can't have one big item. Anything else you want to say about this game? To s sum, up, sum up the game and your experiences playing it. Like, you're, you're having a, like, how often do you play this game? I mean, how, how much are you into this? I mean... 
Caleb here, he came to me with this idea. I mean, we're starting this geek, geek guest segment, and there's a number of people that are interested in being on. If you're interested in being on, you know, uh, comment on YouTube, comment below, uh, comment on Facebook, let us know. You could be on the show. We're in the Willimantic area. Um, Caleb, you brought this to me as something you wanted to talk about, so you clearly you enjoy it a lot. I I, mean, I'm very passionate about this game. <laughs> How often do you play it? Well, ever since school started, not that often because I've been busy with school oh, and homework sucks. and all, all sorts of stuff. But uh, in my free time, you know, whenever my my, uh, my family's available or my friends are, I say, hey, let's go play Munchkin. So you, so when you say your family, are you talking about like your mom and dad? My dad loves this game. Right. I, I like. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. My family <laughs> loves this game so much. Like so much so, we've spent like. Over two hundred dollars total on like Munchkin um, supplement cards and other decks. It, okay, Munchkin is not just Dungeons and Dragons themed. There's Space One. There's a Kung Fu One. Um, you know, pirates, <laughs> fairy princesses, all sorts. They of got stuff. Vikings. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one of the um, one of the one of the cards um, is. Um, a Viking duck, and if you get the Viking duck, it's like you should know better than to pick up a Viking duck in a longboat, and it, <laughs> and you lose levels. Oh, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's like you know, uh, cards. it's so random. I know, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just a great game. I love to play. Uh, I usually play, you know, like probably once a week if I can find the time. Um, you know, we try to switch it up. Like we don't play this with the same deck or same sets every single time. We switch it over so like we play are you supposed to like are, are they self-contained can you mix the 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 space and the other ones together yep. they actually do encourage that just for some smash up uh some like you know new new game game modes you want to do but um if you do that you have to make sure that everything's balanced because for example some um the different sets have different rules like it's the same munchkin rules but they have different like um, items or something that doesn't match with, let's say, this Dungeons and Dragons themed one. Okay. So you have to make pick and choose cards, to make sure it's all balanced, because otherwise you're going to totally disrupt the flow of the game. Because um, someone would get a card that does, that for for that for those rest of the cards doesn't really work well, that it's too powerful or correct. something. All correct. Right. Correct. So you have to like kind of pick and choose, but I mean, it's the possibilities are endless. You could combine three or four different sets if you wanted. You could do zombies, space, pirates. <laughs> zombies, of course. Uh, of course. Every, just, you, could, you could have zombie space, pirates, which are the most epic thing ever. I, I, w I would be a zombie space pirate if uh, I was not a human. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, obviously. So, um, Caleb Soderberg, it's been great having you on the show. Well, thank this, you very much for having me. This is our new Geek Guest segment. We might have Caleb back. We, we, we need a ginger on the show. It's required for a geek show. <laughs> Anyways, this has been Geeks at the Movies, and we'll talk to you later. See you guys.